Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The first frame, Joachim Tontebeck. Possible pot for the right corner, but nowhere around the back of the black and red, so just a safety from his opponent. And that's a good return from the man from Hong Kong, Mark O Fu. And very proud of holding the Scottish Open Championship because he spent Quite a few years living up near Stirling. Delightful person is Marco. In fact, they haven't played each other for a couple of seasons. Marco leading 2-1, 6-2 in the International Championship back in 2013 and 4-1 in an Asian Tour event 2015. And Xiao defeated him in the Shanghai Masters. That was in 2014 and that went to a deciding frame, 5-4. So he's a very talented young Chinese player as is a lot of them coming through. Great to see it. Very good shot from Zhao there. He was in a bit of trouble. That was an excellent shot to find the black cushion, duly acknowledged by Marco Fu. It's quite incredible, Dennis, that the young Chinese players coming through, they seem to learn so quickly. And they're not just crazy potters that score well as well. They all seem to have very good temperaments and the tactical side of their game really something that improves very very quickly i've been very impressed with most if not all of the young chinese players that i've seen coming through and they really are going to be a major force in the next five or ten years and of course with the introduction of snooker into a lot of the schools in china that certainly helps that's why they're turning professional at such a young age Oh, he missed that by a long way. That was a bit of a nervy one. And I don't think he's gotten away with it. There's a red. If Marco can go and he can get on the black, this is a good chance. It's a good early chance for Marco here. Oh, we're talking about a nervy one. <laughs> I thought he could have dropped that in and finished for the black into the left corner. He seemed to stun it in, but he's been very fortunate. He's got away with that one. There's a possible red into the left centre, but it's very tricky. And these middle pockets are playing very, very small.
Well, what a result Marco's had there because not only has he not left anything on, he's left it difficult to, to play a good safety shot. Quite a thin one here to make sure he doesn't go in off to the middle pocket. And he's managed that. Very nervy start from both players, making mistakes. It will take them a while to get used to the speed of the table and more importantly these days, the throw of the cloth when using side. The long ball that Zhao missed was a very good example of that. And although he hasn't got away with this, it's not going to be easy for Marco to get on a colour. If he plays for the blue, he's going to have to play it with lots of check side. And that's never easy to judge on these cloths. And that's exactly what I was talking about. He played it with lots of check side, lots of left hand side. And the left hand side on these cloths throws the cue ball to the right and that's why he overcut the pot there. So a nervy start from both players. One. Good queuing there, he was absolutely dead straight on that. Didn't use a cushion, he just managed to screw it straight back. Another three or four inches would have been absolutely perfect on the blue. Obviously, doesn't mind using the rest. Cue ball will automatically come back up towards those inviting reds. A little bit more pace would have made it slightly easier. If he's dead straight on this red, he can roll it through and get on the black. Yep. No problem. Excellent chance now. Twenty. Twenty one. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty-six. 
37. Just a bit straight on the black here. Would have liked to have left himself an angle. And that was the problem. Couldn't really do too much 44. with the cue ball there. And that's a very bad that's miss. 44. I was a bit just about to say that Chiao's only made one century this season, and maybe that's the reason why he got to 44 there and then missed that sitter of a red with the reds nicely open. It was a great chance to secure the opening frame. And he's far from safe, although he leads by 44 points. No <coughs> reason why Marco, if he gets a chance, can't get right back into this first frame of this session. I thought he was playing it as a shot to nothing. The only red he could leave was the one he had to go at. And he certainly left that. And if he can miss the cannon on the brown here, if he pots this one over the left corner, he could finish nicely on the blue. But even if he cannoned the brown, still should be OK. What? That'll do. He can get the yellow and back up to the red, so... I think it's imperative now that this young man uh, goes on to take the opening frame. And can you believe it? Washington. That's One. two excellent chances that he spurned. can't keep giving chances to somebody of the class of Marco Fu, one of the best match players in the game, one of the heaviest scorers in the game. Eight. Absolutely right, right, Peter, one of the best brick builders the game seen. 467 centuries. Hit 44 centuries last season. No. A bit behind this season, just 15, but that's still going some. And he's made that magical 147 on four occasions. And I think one of them was in Scotland when he, I think it was his first maximum break, and he won a motor car and he hadn't even got a license. Couldn't drive. Forty. Well, he's out of a position. And this will require a very good recovery shot. He's played that really well. That was an excellent shot. Well played. 50. That was yet another kick. You saw the way 22. the black jumped there on the way to the pocket. Yet again, a very good recovery shot. Well played. That was an excellent shot. It was more difficult than it looked. One of the most impressive parts of 
Marco Fu's game is his cue ball control, his positional play is absolutely fantastic. And he seems to do especially well when the conditions are very good, when the tables are fast, when you 30. don't have to hit the balls too hard. He can struggle sometimes because he lacks a little bit of cue power compared to the other top players. But when the tables play fast and you don't have to hit the balls too hard, he's as good as anyone. 38. Yeah, he doesn't uh, what we call feather the ball. You know, when you line up the shot, a lot of most players push the cue in and out four or five times. He just points the cue, pulls it back, pulls the trigger, and it certainly works for him. 39. Now, these two reds are available into the same pocket that he's taking the black, so he could do with placing the cue ball somewhere near the brown would be perfect. That'll do nicely. 46. So he's crept into the lead by one point, and maybe that brown is going to be the key ball in this opening frame. It's the only one that's 47. relatively safe. And... You'd have to say that Zhao Ting Tong will be kicking himself here because he's had a couple of chances to win the frame. And it's all about this Brown here, and he's just got to sit there and hope that somehow Marco 54. slips up. Five. That's an excellent shot from Marco Fu to develop the brown. He was a little bit straighter on that red than he would have liked, and consequently had to play the red with more pace, but he played it very, very well, judged it very well. I like where he's placed the cue ball there because with the yellow right over the pocket, it's difficult to control the cue ball. But the fact that he's left himself the left side of the table, 59. little touch of right hand side, and if he slips past the brown, he'll be nicely on the green. But you still got to be careful when they're so close to the pocket. Delicate little shot needed here. 61. And he couldn't have played it any better. Quick glance at the scoreboard. 16 in front. Green and brown would be enough. Sixty-four. And you have to say this is a, a bonus for Marco here because he would have felt he was going to lose the opening frame. His young opponent had a 68. couple of chances to secure it and didn't take them. Seventy-three. Seventy-nine. That's exactly That's what Marco does. If he gets Marco a chance, he will win the frame in one visit. And he needed a couple of chances, but he took those very nicely. And he leads one frame to nil. And although it's the best of 11, Peter, uh, young Chow <laughs> Sing Tong will be very disappointed. He had a couple of good chances to secure that opening frame. Yes, and he's a very gifted player, very naturally talented player. And you tend to find that players like that will often go for one or two balls that perhaps they shouldn't do, but that all comes with experience. He'll learn as he gets a little bit older. Of course, that's one of the things that makes him such a dangerous player as well, because when the balls that he goes for are going in, he's capable of beating anybody. Very, very talented young player from China. One of the most gifted young players coming through. Just needs to pick up a bit of experience, but almost certainly a future tournament winner. 
Yeah, he led by 40 odd points and he missed a sitter of a red into the corner, which more or less would have secured him the opening frame. Still, Jan Verhaas finishes setting the balls up and it's Marco's Three turn to break frame. off. Marco Futebol. Mm. Winning the first frame in good style in the end will help to settle Marco Fu. Understandably, he looks a little bit nervous early on and missed a couple of chances. But there was definitely signs of a spring in his step towards the end of the frame there. Looks as if he might have changed his mind here. He was going to get down and have a go at the one into the right corner. Now the one to the left corner he's taking. Believe it or not, that was an attempt at a pot. Now someone's phone's making rather a strange ringtone. Wouldn't do that with the Anverhaas around. One. Great opening pot. Anverhaas now a senior referee and on the board of World Snooker. Been around a long time. Great referee. And also nice to see so many of the ladies refereeing these days. Marco Fu. That's an unexpected miss. noticed early on in this match that quite a few of the balls have been jumping upon contact and it could well just be down to atmospherics but it's been noticeable so far that Marco is having to hit the ball harder than he normally likes to to move the cue ball around the table Another good safety shot there from Zhao Jingtong. Oh, 
Marco will be looking to get a good cue ball here. He knew he was opening the reds up. Oh, that's a very, very good effort. Excellent safety shot. Well played. He can just get through to the red, just to the right of the pink to come back down the table off that one. As long as he doesn't hit the brown, this is a good shot. Acknowledged straight away by Marco, tapping the table before the white got anywhere near where it's finished up. In fact, that's a better safety shot than Marco's because I can't see an easy return to the bulk area. Nice, oh, pick one out nicely there. Oh, that's excellent. Really was. Bit difficult to please this crowd tonight, Dennis. Yeah, I noticed that this afternoon. Uh, was it Mark Selby knocked in a 51 break? Not a murmur. <laughs> that puts the Brian into a better position for. Uh, a safety shot. It's a good target now, the yellow and brown, to try and get in behind. Just needs to be careful he doesn't push a red over the left corner. He's played that really well. This could be really good. This could be really good. Unlucky. Excellent shot. Marco does have a chance of getting the cue ball behind the yellow and brown here. But he'll need to hit this red very, very thin. Oh, this is a lot more difficult. Bridging over the brown. Under the circumstances, that was a pretty good effort. This is the sort of long red that this young man knocks in on a regular basis. Wow. The side that he had on the ball there. Loads and loads of right-hand side to avoid the reds. Very, very clever shot. If he'd have played it plain ball, he was cannoning into the reds, and he played it with so much right-hand side that he managed to avoid the reds and play it as a shot to nothing. Very clever shot. And very well executed and very unlucky not to be on a colour. And I think the Rye smile acknowledges that as well. Super pot. Zhao Shintong, one. Well, it was low percentage, Dennis, but when you're as good a potter as he is, it's difficult to say it's the wrong shot. And of course, it's never the wrong shot if it goes in, is it? Oh, 
Well, he just queued across that one slightly. When I say that, he didn't push the cue through in a straight line. So, a uh, bit of a let off. So now can this young man get himself going? Well, Dennis, although he won the first frame, from what I've seen so far, I really believe that Marco is struggling on this cloth. I think he's finding it quite heavy. So it'll be interesting to see how he handles the conditions. Oh, my word. Well, that is quite incredible. That is just pure carelessness. It's such an easy pot. But this game... I mean, if you don't give everything 100% concentration, it's amazing what you can miss. And he was way ahead of him. He wasn't even dreaming about missing that pot. And if he misses many more like that, he uh, could find himself out of this what? UK championship because well, you can't afford to miss those. That was another bad contact. Marco Fu... He's had about four or five of those already. That was the worst one we've seen so far. What about this new chalk they're using, Peter? They the, the don't get any kicks, apparently. Is, is Marco not using the new chalk? I don't know, but I use it, and it is fantastic. It is a game-changer, that's for sure. Yeah, it's like a white colour, isn't it? A bit expensive, though. £15 a block of chalk? Seven. Oh, my first car didn't even cost that when I moved to England. Still runs well, that car. <coughs> Marco Fusa. He got up straight away, Marco. He knew he'd mishit that. He's got a terrific temperament, but, well, missing that type of shot doesn't have to test your temperament. Seven. You were mentioning the new chalk there, Dennis, that most of the players seem to be using now. Uh, Zhao Jingtong isn't using the new chalk. And Eight. it's amazing what a difference, what a noticeable difference it's made because the players that are using the new chalk, they're not leaving as much chalk on the cloth. So there's not as much chalk going on the ball. So there's far less chance of getting kicks. There should be less chances of getting big bounces. But one of the referees was saying to me that um, they tend to use the chalk marks if it comes to replacing the ball. So it's not quite, it makes the referee's job actually more difficult now. The fact that most 40. of the players are using a chalk that is not leaving many marks on the cloth. 50. I think we should get our heads together, Peter, and design a tip that doesn't require chalk. Well, that would be a good... I think someone has tried that in the past. Yeah, I think that's already been done, Dennis. We missed the boat there. Twenty-one. <coughs> this pink isn't easy with the rest. He needs to get some action on the cue ball as well. That's a poor effort 
He'll be very disappointed so far. Just He's really top. struggled in his Don't first couple of frames. He's such a gifted player as well. I don't think you can quite believe how poorly he's played this evening so far. And I don't think Marco Fu can believe it either. Uh, there is one loose red there, but I think Marco may be tempted to just can it into the reds and maybe bring the black into play as well. He's got a choice. He can just play for the one loose red. And sometimes he does that, Marco. This time he's gone into them, but he's over, over screwed it. That was a big target he had there. And now he's going to have to try and get the white in behind the Six. green and brown. Oh, he's hit it too thin. Marco Fu six. It's safe, but that's not where he was hoping to put the cue ball. He's given his opponent a chance to get in behind the green and brown. Could develop the black here as well. Well, not like that. Far. The miss. Well, he's played that with a lot of right hand side. Marcus Fuchsia. Can I that, please, Ben? And I can only suggest that to pull the cue ball to the right like that so much and miss the red completely, the cloth must be playing heavy. And that could just be oh, down to on. atmospherics. But it certainly won't make things easy for either player if that is the case. Well, Marco's put him back in again, but What's if he the judges the safety, I mean, the green and brown's a good target to get in behind. To you. He's just discussing with the marker oh, exactly where the cue ball was. They've got a monitor they can look at. There we go. I don't know that left, right a bit. Left a bit, thumbs up. Have a look at that. Okay, Marco. I agree with you, Dennis. If he gets this safety shot right, not only could Marco be in trouble, but he could also develop the black here as well. Yeah, Marco's played that in such a way that he's uh, let Yao Zingtong see this red. He can get past the yellow and get the frame back to normal.
who's going to get in behind the brand first? This is a better effort. Oh, a bit unlucky. You know, that came off quite square off that green side cushion there, Dennis. I thought I was just going to slide more there and possibly get behind the brown. Choice of shot there from Marco. He didn't want to risk playing off the left of the reds because it's so close to the cushion. You have to judge it to perfection to play the safety, the thin safety. See, that could have been played a little bit better. He's left Marco a straightforward up and down safety return. He'll send the red over towards the black off two cushions here. Yes, he had the opportunity there, Dennis, to play there a lot thinner and possibly get in behind the brown. It's, uh, both players struggling on the conditions this evening. Cushions look quite bouncy. Balls look as if they're playing heavy. And again, that's an excellent safety shot, but... The cue ball came off the yellow side cushion that time, very square. <coughs> Just makes it more difficult for the players. Constant readjustments going on all the time. That's one of the reasons why it makes snooker one of the most difficult games in the world. That's a nice shot from Marco. Touch the double kiss really well there, Dennis. Well, at least he hasn't stuck the red up. If you stick the red up off that shot, I call it a DDK, the dreaded double kiss. This time he hasn't left the red, but he could be in trouble. And again, that's another indication that the table and the balls are playing quite heavy this evening because Marco didn't get the cue ball anywhere near where he wanted to. This is a tester for the young man. Thank you. I'd be tempted to have a go with the double here because he'd be on the pink. Quite easy to play in behind the brown, but definitely risk the double. It could give him a good chance here. Oh, he was walking around. He thought he'd got that. And look at the angle he had on the pink to pot the pink and move the reds and black there. And he was on the march. He thought that was in.
You can see the frustration growing for the young Chinese player, Zhao Jing Tong. And even though this is a best of 11 match, you get the feeling that he really needs to win this frame. Not settled at all, not happy, not comfortable out there. Early days. <coughs> Yeah, it doesn't really suit the young Chinese player, this tactical sort of play, would rather be in amongst them. just in a bit of a stalemate situation at the moment because neither player wants to move the three reds and the black which are together that was a very poor safety shot from the young Chinese player very fortunate to get away with that this looks good well played very good shot but again, Zhao Jing Tong will probably just roll into these reds. If he decides to play an attacking safety shot, he needs to hit this very thin. It's always difficult to hit that very thin, coming across the ball like that. And under the circumstances, it didn't work out too badly at all. Marco may have the opportunity to get the cue ball behind the brown here. Another double kiss. Well, wow. it's all happening out there, Dennis, tonight. Well, let's see if we can knock this long red in. It's been, as we mentioned, about come up to 12 minutes since the ball's been potted. And he's a mile off. You tend to lose your rhythm when you have bouts of safety like that. But it has to be said, he hasn't really got into any sort of rhythm so far in the match. It's all about confidence this game, and he needs to get in amongst the balls and get a few points on the board. And but it's just a scrappy frame, and they're just as important. And what's gone before so far in this match, Dennis, just leads me to believe that the table's playing very heavy and that's going to make things very difficult for both players. And you can just see that both players are really struggling. They're both having to hit the balls quite hard to move the cue ball around the table. And that is an excellent pop. Well played. Now, well, what sort of angle has he got on this red? If he can get nicely the other side Six. of the blue, he can go into the red and black be straight he can screw back for the pink and do the same thing and he was almost straight has he left Seven. enough angle on the pink he doesn't want to be straight and he just yeah he's got a slight angle but doesn't want to double kiss the red or the black <laughs> he's double kissed the red and on absolutely nothing now one good shot here as long as he doesn't cannon the black into the pocket he's having a look to make sure he doesn't 13. plant the black in because he's a great chance of getting up behind the brown <coughs> but if he hits it at any pace he may plant the black into the pocket yeah he's have to have to be careful here he might be limited to what he can do with the cue ball well whoa 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 <laughs> Zhao Xintong, 13. 
<laughs> he's smiling away at himself as he goes back to his seat. I bet he thought the black was in. Now we can have a bit of fun in games. Wow, well, that's fun in games. Miss Q. Oh, and a miss. And of course a miss called. Washington four. Back. But with the black over the pocket, we could be going for some time. The frame's just gone over the half hour mark. There's no way you can leave anything enough, into the left corner pocket with the black right and the jaws. It could have turned out a lot worse for Marco. He could have left a free ball, couldn't he? In which case, things would have changed very quickly. This needs to be pretty thin. And that's too thick. That's a poor safety shot from Marco. Well, he may be one nil up, but he's really struggling out there, Dennis. Unfortunately for him, his opponent is struggling even more. Wow, this One. is a terrific chance. Just stun up past the pink, leave the red. Even if he's dead straight, he's got very little to do with it, the black over the pocket. It's all about black Six. to yellow. And with it being right over the pocket, <laughs> it makes it slightly more awkward. But you'd think if he leaves it in such a way that he can play up and really you're looking at getting a cannon onto the green. That's what you'd be looking at if you play for the black. He's decided that's going to be a bit awkward and I'll tell you what, he's Seven. played a little beauty there because from the blue to yellow is so much easier. Terrific shot there. And we always say you never settle until you get Twelve. your first frame on the board. And he's well on the way now. Green and Brown need it. 14. Seventy. They'll certainly 24. be feeling much better now. Just double checking the scoreboard, but uh, well and truly safe. Twenty six. And frame. Not bothered about the black, he had a couple of chances in the opening frame, didn't take them, but he'd be feeling much better now that he's took the second frame. We're all square, one frame each. Just went a little awkward uh, in that frame there, which lasted uh, just over 33 minutes. And Marco really had a chance there of stamping his authority on the match, Peter, but... You know, he, he played a few little careless shots, which you don't see that often from Marco. Well, as I alluded to earlier, Dennis, Marco is one of those players that can struggle with the tables playing heavy. He's not blessed with the greatest cue power, but he does have great touch, great cue ball control. And when he's playing on a fast table, when the balls are playing light, he's as good as anybody when he has to hit the balls very hard that he can struggle sometimes and he's just struggled on this table so far this evening so it'll be interesting to see how he copes with it for the rest of this match uh, you were saying earlier peter you played on one of the outside tables and you you said it it was playing quite heavy you were struggling a bit on it uh, these seem to be playing okay but if you get that little bit of dampness in the cloth it makes such a vast difference it does make a huge difference i think a lot of people perhaps watching at home will be thinking well it's it's an indoor sport surely the weather can't make that much of a difference but um it makes a huge difference you. and you it's tend to friend. find that the There's best conditions that we play on around the world are where we have the lowest humidity Anyway, Xiao Jintong breaks off in frame three. Yeah. 
But yes, I played out the back earlier today. I played another one of the young Chinese players, uh, Liu Huishan, played very, very well against me. And I thought that the conditions were very tough, uh, played very heavy, very slow. And the pockets were very, very small, especially in middle pockets. But of course, when you have to hit the balls harder when the cloth is playing slower, it, it's going to make the pockets smaller because the object ball is arriving at the pockets with greater speed. This is a tough pot if he's taking this on. Oh, wow. That is fantastic. Tremendous queuing. One. A bit unlucky not to finish on a colour, really, and it's a very tough blue that he's faced with here. A very attacking young player. You feel certain that he'll be taking this on. This requires very good queuing. He's putting a touch of left-hand side on that. Well, that blue jumped as well, didn't it? It was excellent queuing, but it's been noticeable. We're only in frame three, but there's been a lot of heavy Six. contacts so far. Maybe it's just the atmosphere out there this evening. And the pink's awkward, and it's tricky to get on the black. Seven. That was about the best angle he could leave on the blue, but there's enough room between the green and brown as long as he doesn't catch him on the way back. Nicely judged, as long as it pulls up. Doesn't want to keep on going, and it has. Twelve. End of break. Just kept on running there, that cue ball. Well, can you see this? Oh, it's awkward. 13. Oh, nicely played. <laughs> Once again, tricky blue. Has to avoid the yellow and the brown. And he stopped playing a quick safety shot 13. in the end. <laughs> what a lucky result he's had there. <laughs> missed the pot, missed the cannon on the yellow, and look where the white has finished. Goodness gracious me. What a result. I think Marco did well to show no signs of any body language whatsoever at all there, Dennis. Tell you what, if you had got that shot against steady Eddie Charlton from Australia, he would have been swearing his head off into himself. He would have just, he would not out loud. What an excellent shot that was. Very, very unfortunate there to leave this red on. Although this red is tricky, you feel this young man will be taking this on. Played it well. fact he won the second frame will that make him settle down he missed a few in Eight. the opening frame should have won that frame but uh, let's see if we can see this raw no. natural talent at work now because he is good to watch this young player Sixteen. Did you ever experiment with a haircut like that, Dennis? Yeah, I was about seven at the time, Peter. Six. 
big recovery pot there. 17. Oh, we could have done without that little nudge on the yellow. That has spoiled it. I think the blue is hampering him slightly. He might be able to cue at the... Well, the brown, possibly. Well, he's such an attacking player. I'm almost certain that he won't play it, but he could just drop behind the blue and leave Marco in all sorts of trouble, really. But cue the brown nicely. I thought he was hampered to a greater degree than he was. 21. A very good chance to win the frame at this visit now. And all from that fluked snooker. Dennis behind the yellow. Very, very fortunate. That's one of the things that makes this great game so fascinating. You think you've seen almost everything. And then something happens that makes you think, well, how did that happen? 29. Played a poor positional shot there. And was fortunate to end up on this red. It's not what he played. I have a sneaky feeling he might not be on this red. He'd have to play it with a lot of side if he's going to make it into a potting angle. And the fact he's walking around the table tells me but he can't pot it. He's now looking at where he wants to put the cue ball up the other end of the table. So 42 points in front. He was like this in the opening frame. He had a 40 plus advantage and missed an easy red. This time he's let the position slip. Chao Shen Tong, 29. Oh, Marco faced with a tough safety shot here. But there is a possibility that he could actually get the cue ball behind the yellow here if he hit it very thin. And he played that all wrong. Got that completely wrong. Just about as much body language as you'll ever see from Marco Fu, Dennis. He's looking um, One, thank not you. too amused at the moment, Marco, sitting in his seat. Yeah, another uh, dreaded double kiss. This time it may cost him the frame. Let that slip a bit further than he intended. Eight. He wanted to be straight on this red for the middle, just to screw back for the black. Now a change of plan. And that's just another example, Dennis, that the table is definitely playing heavier this evening than <coughs> what the players are used to. It's always a telltale sign when the player lets the cue ball slip. Oh, that's a very bad mess. Russian tongue. No. He's been very fortunate there, because if he doesn't double kiss the black, he's leaving the red into the left corner. Marco could try to get the cue ball behind the yellow here, and I've decided against it. He's played a good safety shot. Thank you. A bit fortunate to leave the full ball snooker behind the brown, it must be said. Pretty well judged. Don't think Marco can see enough of this red to pot it. Maybe he can. No.
This is tough if he's taking this on. Oh, that's an excellent point. Well played. Played with lots of drag to take the pace out of the cue ball. Played that really well. Zhao Shintong. One. Yeah, so that's a lack of experience there. I mean, should have made absolutely certain of that. <laughs> Played the correct shot. He had to get on the red, but. One. If you can play one good shot here. He's got a bit of an angle on the black. The four reds are all covering each other, but I think he can screw onto them from this position. No, nowhere near. Could have done with a slightly Eight. better angle on the black to disturb them. Akufu, eight. Once again, this needs to be very thin. <coughs> and that's only okay because Akufu can get his hand on the table and possibly play a shot to nothing here. I touch the white. Thank you very much. Well, foul. Marco called a foul That's on himself there. Feathered the cue ball. Yeah, not always can the referee see that type of shot. But you feel it yourself, so he immediately declared the foul on himself. I wonder what a football manager would say if centre forward fell over in the penalty area and got up and said, no, he didn't trip me, I just fell over. Can't see that ever happening. It's not easy, but there is a chance of getting the cue ball behind the yellow here. Well, decided to take it on. That was a very difficult pot. That's not the best choice of shot. Another chance for Marco. But this is a tester because he struggled out there this evening, despite winning the first frame. That was an excellent pot. <coughs> they used all of the pocket there. But played it well. Never easy when you're Eight. dropping balls in across the table like that. A good position as far as Xiao Zing Tong's concerned. Marco's gonna have to uh, well, pop most of them, including that 60. difficult blue. Seventy. And the pink's also awkward, so <coughs> he can get himself right back into this third frame, but it be very difficult to win it at this visit. Yeah. 
24. Twenty-five. I'd love to drop in between the blue and the yellow here. Where the balk line is, if he could get the white on the balk line between blue and yellow. Well, what does he play it here? <laughs> he didn't think he 32. was anywhere near that position. He thought he'd mishit that. But as you say, they're coming off the cushions a bit square, Peter. And Marker was surprised that he dropped nicely onto that yellow. 34. So can he leave an angle on the brown to get to the difficult blue? Yes, to be perfectly honest, Dennis, the conditions this evening look very similar to how the table played out the back this afternoon. Very heavy, square slow and the players having seconds. to hit the balls very hard to maneuver the cue ball around the table and that certainly doesn't help because these pockets are not big hasn't got a great angle on the brown here and we need to play this with an awful lot of power if he's going to try and develop the blue here 41. Mark of food, 41. Neither player will want to pot the blue unless they can get over towards the pink because they both need blue and pink. <coughs> Marco needs hold three colours. Zhao Zing Tong, he needs that difficult pink as well as the blue. Should double the pink across the table, bring the white back up towards the black, and the blue should finish on the ball cushion in the middle of the table there. <coughs> that's if you hit it hard enough. Yeah, that's okay. opportunity to send the blue around the table oh, decided against that got a double kiss and almost went in off he seems to let his concentration slip Dennis I know he's only a young man and he's not been playing that long and he's got so much natural ability but he just lets himself down sometimes with a lack of concentration. And that lack of concentration could cost him dear in this frame now because Marco Fu has just played a magnificent safety shot. Good escape, but to be perfectly honest, that blue could have gone anywhere. And he's been very fortunate to just run past the middle pocket. Just a containing safety shot <coughs> from Marco. But he could be in trouble when he comes back to the table because this is a good opportunity to lay a snooker behind the black. Played it well.
It's very important for Marco to hit this blue because if he was to miss it, his opponent will only then need the blue, wouldn't need the difficult pink. Oh, he's potted it, has he? Five. <laughs> Settle down, please. Still needs the pink and the black, so. That would prove to be eighteen and uh, it's a strange old game. The snooker he just holds his hand up to apologise for the fluke, but he walks back to his seat and he'll be more than delighted because that fluke has given him the frame and he now leads two one. Amazing what can happen with this game, Peter. Isn't <laughs> it's it? absolutely amazing, yeah. isn't it? You just, you just can't get your breath sometimes, can you? I mean, the pink was fairly safe, and he played a good snooker. And as I said, he had to hit the the blue, otherwise, thing uh, would only needed the uh, he would only needed the the one ball, and, and he's fluked the blue and dropped on the pink perfectly the one place on the table where he could give yeah. the pink a chance of going in the pocket at very little pace and be perfect on the black. Yeah. So very, very fortunate there from Marco. But a great pink, to be fair. Yeah, it absolutely. was an excellent pink. Absolutely. Really, yeah. really good shot. But Xiao Ting Tong will be kicking himself again. He had a, you know, a chance to secure the frame earlier there, didn't he? And I thought he was just going to suddenly relax and you know, one more frame before the mid-session interval, and he could do with taking that just to... Go to that interval and uh, get himself ready for the remaining frames. Thank you. Fourth frame. Marco Fubre. So Marco Fu breaks off. Start frame four. Struggled out there this evening so far. We'll be delighted to be 2 1 up. Big frame this, especially considering both players have struggled this evening. 2 2 or 3 1. This is a tempter. It's a young Chinese player. Oh, that's brilliant. That is absolutely fantastic. It's been a bit unfortunate there, really. Not to be on a colour better. But that was beautiful cue in there. A nice shot with the rest. Four. <coughs> yeah, the pink's awkward at the moment. Black a little bit awkward, but not completely out of the game. Five. A little flick would help. Mm. Might not be too bad. He's a left-hander, so it's the right side of the table for him. If he could get on the red just to the right of the black, 
can really open things up. Got this one that's uh, just this side of the pink, but ten. The only thing is, if he pots this, the pink it will tie the pink up completely. So he may play for the blue here. Eleven. Still got another one of three or four loose reds before he concentrates on that one that's just to the right above the black. But he could still play for that one here. Now that seems to have flown off this uh, back cushion. How was that for a bounce, Dennis? 16. <laughs> Amazing where it's finished. <coughs> that time he did play for that one to the right of the black. He was going to pop that cannon, the other one, free the black, but... The the white just flew off the cushion. And that's so frustrating for a player because he's played the shot perfectly. He's Rushing played it with perfect weight. 16. And a huge bounce that he's had off the black cushion there meant that the cue ball travelled at least two feet farther than he intended to. So through no fault of his own, that's end the break. And it can be very difficult sometimes, Dennis, can't it, to control your emotions and stay strong mentally when things like that happen out there when it's not really your fault. And you don't often see Marco. He just was a little shake of the head. Very rarely do you see that from Marco. His temperament is usually impeccable. <laughs> he does pop balls for fun, this fella. One. Okay, he's not on the color, but it's amazing. Another left-hander that's a brilliant potter. It's amazing how many there are in the game now. Going way back. Jackson I mean, way back to the 70s. As we watch this white drop in behind the green, we only really had the South African Perry Mons, great left-handed potter, and then there was Jimmy White came on the scene, brilliant left-handed potter, and nowadays there's a host of them. Judd Trump, Mark Allen, oh, you could go on forever. <coughs> Marco may elect to come off two cushions here just to nestle into the two reds that are close together by the black. Needs to judge it correctly, though. That's pretty good. Straightforward safety shot for Zhao Jingtong here. Maybe play with a touch of left hand side and get the cue ball behind the green on the ball cushion. It's just over hit it slightly. With a good effort. Safety shot. And at first glance, Marco might be in a little bit of trouble here. He's going to have to bend the cue ball a little bit here, I think. Or maybe not, maybe you can just see it. Oh. Mm. I thought he had to bend the cue ball a little bit there. He thought he could see it, but looking directly fight. down the line from our commentary position, it looked incredibly tight. Yep. And one of the reasons why players don't like playing that swirl shot is because, in effect, they play with check Bring side and it takes pace out of the cue ball and it makes the shot very, very difficult. I think a red uh, move, didn't it? And this is one of those occasions where it's so difficult for the referee to get the cue ball You're back it up. in the exact spot. Because we... Just chatting to the... No. Marker there, one of Not our other referees. Uh, but 
there was very, very little of the red sticking out. And that's what they look at. But even looking at that, it's tough. I think it's down to the, the ref. I think the monitor's not going to help all that much this time. No, did the red move? Did the red move or did not? Nothing moved, just the blue moved. No, the red didn't move. Uh, Rian was just asking, he just flicked the blue, that was all. That's pretty close. But I think that Marco may well have it's been snookered to a slightly d greater degree than that. I think he can fractionally see more of this red, Dennis, than he could previously. Yeah. And it does make a big difference okay. because with the previous shot, I was almost certain that he would have to play this with left-hand side. And Marco, the fair sportsman that he is, said to referee Jan Verhaas that he could actually see more of the red than he could previously. And yeah, and move the cue ball. Anyway, he's coming off uh, the two cushions to glance off the red. Oh, no, he's back. <laughs> he was going to do. Is he going to play with the trace aside? He did swerve that slightly. Well judged. Yeah, that's a great shot. That's a shot that that's the shot that I thought we had to play the first time. But I say players don't particularly like playing that shot because if they get too much swerve, they hit the red too thick, and the check side off the cushion takes all the pace out of the cue ball. Under the circumstances, he'll be delighted not to leave a pot. And that's a good safety shot from Zhao Jing Tong. Blocked off the escape on the left-hand side of the table. Although that was just a containing safety shot from Marco, he played it very, very well. Almost impossible for him to get back to Balk from the position that he was left in. Would have had to have hit the red, which is now closest to the black, very, very thin, and there were two reds that he could have caught on the way back to Balk. So that was very well worked out. <coughs> One. What an excellent shot that was. Made sure he got a good cue ball. And if he can get a good cue ball here and just land on the yellow, he could have Marco in all sorts of trouble. But they're delicate little shots. Joseph and Tom, one. Yeah, you need to just drop on the yellow. You can see the one the right side of the table. But if he had a good tight end behind the yellow, you see, he was frightened of not reaching the yellow and putting himself in trouble. Now, 
where's this red going to finish he thought he had a free shot there but the only ball he could leave was the one he was having a go at and he's left that well it's just amazing the number of times that that actually happens dennis you play a, a shot with full conviction but also with safety in mind at the same time knowing that if you get a good cue ball you can only possibly leave the red that you're playing and the number of times that uh, the red seems to come down the table or go across the table and you leave your opponent an easy starter it's quite incredible the number of times that happens well that's a very poor shot thank you i think he's just okay oh. Because he can roll the blue in and leave the red that's over the right corner, but he certainly didn't get the cue ball where he intended, as Peter said there. He just overscrewed that, but if he leaves the white near the cushion when he rolls the blue in, he'll be okay. And he's got a, a gap there to pop this red. Go between the two reds, it's just this side of the pink. Six. And he'll have a choice of colours. Should finish on the blue here. He's hit it a bit too hard. He's away up the table, and if he goes too far, that's very Seven. careless. He had such a margin for error there. No reason why he should have hit it at that pace. Well, to be fair to him, Dennis, I think the cue ball's absolutely sprung off the black cushion there. I think it just launched off the black cushion. He played that with a lot of side, but the cue ball just jumped as soon as he hit the black cushion. So. Seven. I think I'd have to give him the benefit of the doubt there. I think he's got another big bounce there. It's very frustrating for the players when these things happen because through no fault of your own, you lose position, you lose the opportunity to score and win the frame in that visit. Judge this one correctly. Twice across the table and hoping to land on a red. It's behind the black spot area. Mm. Quite easily leave one on here. Mm, it's come off square and he has stuck the red up. chance for this young Chinese player. One. Already 31 points in front. He's got three fairly comfortable reds and then the four awkward reds. Seven. Gonna Eight. need one of those difficult reds. <laughs> it's to pull up, and it has fourteen. Certainly not what he intended. He's 52 in front. 22. Had he have been able to have got on this red and get on the black, he could have put himself 60 in front with 59 remaining. 
Can't do that now. Zhao Xintong, 22. Well, he's in the driving seat in this uh, frame before the mid-session interval. But it's not over just yet. Well, the reds are all safe, but the colours are all in the open. Yeah, I think the blue will come to his rescue. And cover that red. I think, yep, it has. to say that's not what he played it's been very fortunate not to push the red over the green pocket and leave an easy pot on for Zhao Jingtong Although it's a thin snick, Marco may decide to take this red on into the yellow pocket. He could almost play it as a shot to nothing if he gets a good cue ball. And he could be on the black if it goes in. And that's what he's played. And he's played it to perfection. Excellent One. shot. Not only that, he's got an angle on the black to go into the reds. Well, I thought the crowd would give him a nice round of applause for that shot. Not only the pot, but as Peter said, to get on the black and give himself a chance to bring the three reds into play. Oh. Didn't quite work out. You can still cut this in. Eight. Maybe. It's a thin one, but... 44 behind, so... No, must be just that bit too thin. Marco Fu, eight.
44 points behind. Jia Singtong needs a red and a black to put himself 52 points in front with just 51 remaining. I'd be tempted to knock that red up the table into a safe position, the one that's <coughs> near the left side of the table there. Get it out of play. Well, he hasn't done that. He's put it in the middle of the table. I would have tried to put it out of commission. There's another little bit of insurance. The way he played it, Dennis, it was fortunate, really, t for the red to travel in line with the pink so that the red wasn't then potable into the right-hand black pocket because that could quite easily have gone wrong. Now, if he plays back down the table, he doesn't really want to go past the balk line. Oh, that's so careless. Boy, what a careless shot that is. He, all of a sudden, he's opened the whole game up. I mean, that could be costly. He's played a few like that. You can't lose your concentration at this game. And all of a sudden, with that one. one poor shot, the whole table is opened up. But for me, once again, Dennis, the shot that Marco has just played just exhibits how difficult he's finding this table this evening and how heavy it's playing that was nowhere near where he wanted to be and there was pressure on that and under the circumstances it was a good pot but once again the cue ball's come off the side cushion a bit square seven wanted to be another foot 18 yep. inches to the left of where he is now yeah, he's got to concentrate here and make sure he gets a good cannon on the green to put it on for the opposite corner that he's taking the red into. A delicate little screw shot to make sure you get a good cannon on the green. You don't want to be hitting the green on the right side as he would look at it. The other side, if he didn't finish on the green, he'd be on the brown. Can he roll it in and get to the brown? Might be able to do that. Yeah, that was much easier. 
Eight. Green will do. Or the blue to get himself up to the reds. Plenty of points there, regardless of which colour he so. takes. Well, what a steal this would be. And as you quite rightly said, Dennis, it was such a careless shot from Zhao. Played that nicely. Thirteen. <coughs> Fourteen. Twenty one. Twenty two. This is the key shot. The yellow's off its spot. So if he gets nice on the yellow, he's going to nick this fourth frame. Chinese player will enjoy his mid-session interval. If Marco can clear these up, he doesn't want to look. Thirty-one. He needs the lot. Thirty-four. Forty-nine. It's been a terrific clearance. <coughs> Steadies himself. And there you have 56. it. It is all and done. That was going to be Mark two frames all gone to the mid-session interval. One careless shot 56. from Zhao Zing Tong. And he left Marco in. And that was the chance he needed. And he now goes to the mid-session interval, 3-1 up. Zhao <laughs> Zingtong gets this fifth frame underway. Not the best break-off shot in the world. Played that in such a way, I mean, he could have played for the black, but it was too risky. He decided to play with a bit of pace to come up for the blue, but uh, such a good potter, this young player. But I think it knocked the stuffing out of him somewhat in that previous frame. He was odds on going to the mid-session interval all square, and he played one careless safety shot that opened all four reds up and I think this is a huge frame for a young Chinese player because if he falls 4-1 behind against Marco he's got a mini mountain to climb one Some applause from the crowd for that shot, but Marco won't be too pleased with the outcome. If he decides to take this on, this is really tricky black.
Well, you can put everything into the pot and just let the white run into the reds. Make sure of the pot. Oh, that was so Box close. Four. And what a chance that would have been. Could go straight into the reds here off this and open things up. And that's exactly what he's done. Now, where's that red going? Don't go in the corner pocket, whatever you do. That's a terrific shot. And he's Eight. given himself a great opportunity just with that one attacking shot he played there. Nine. Now, he's made a few little careless mistakes, but there's no reason. Why you shouldn't make a sizable break here. You couldn't have them sitting any better than this. It's the sort of way you'd set them up for a practice session. 16. Just keep your focus and just keep knocking balls in. Seventeen. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. He's just lost the white a little bit there. Just needs to give this Jim care and attention, which he did. Would like to have been a little bit straighter on that black. Thirty-two. Needs to mind his cue ball because the frame is at his mercy here. 33. 38. Thirty-nine. <coughs> Forty-six. Forty-seven. Yeah, this is the frustrating thing about the game of snooker. Marco Fu sitting in his seat and he's. Uh, thinking I should have been knocking all those in, but he left that black right on the edge of the pocket. Oh, they see, now that is just so careless. Zhao Xingtong. Zhao Xingtong, you can't do that, I mean. You know, it's amazing, he's 3-1 down, and the chances he had, he could quite easily have been already leading 4-1, believe it or not. And that's the worst possible kiss that Marco could have had. Full ball on the brown, he would have been on the black. So he's faced with a tricky blue. But it's a chance he should never have had. Six. Seven.
12. Thirteen. The reds are not too badly Thanks. placed. There's a few near the cushions, but they're okay. The one on the right side of the table is okay. Mark will be in a right hander. And took the chance to just drop on that. It doesn't want to bounce too far, otherwise you're gonna to have to use the rest. And he has let it bounce a little bit. Twenty further than he intended. Can he reach it? Uh, fully stretched there. And that's a let off. Has he been 26. fortunate? He has. It was the shot before that was a careless one to leave himself stretching there. So he's missed a trick there. Strange shot that Marcos fled there. One. <coughs> mm. Just where he didn't want to be. You need some shot to pot this blue and get on to the red that's up near the black spot. Yeah, feels that the pink is slightly easier, but even that is not perfect, but he can get on the red. Yeah, nicely played. Very good shot indeed. Seven. I didn't Eight. look at the scoreboard there. If he takes the pink, if he had to play it up for the black there, he only needed the black. Now he's looking at the scoreboard, which is a little bit too late, because if he takes the pink, he needs the difficult red. You see, he should have looked at the scoreboard before he potted that red. He could have stunned up for the black, and that was all he would have needed. <coughs> Certainly, he would only have been able to tie that he have got on the black. And having made that mistake, Dennis, there's probably value in playing the screw shot on the blue and trying to move the red off the side cushion. But it was an error. He'll probably get down and just knock this in the pocket as if it's over the pocket and uh, nothing to worry about. Probably. 14. I think there was value in taking the blue there, though. 
Oh, this is a great Vincent shot he's played here. 14. Yeah, in fact, it was right the first time. He was 34, the difference. So there you see it. Oh, he's got to not only hit the red, he's got to get it safe. Oh. Oh. It's a free ball. He's got a full house here. No, Shintong, full. Free ball. No missed call there because it's at the snooker's required stage. And the pace he hit it at, One. it went in that pocket like a rocket. There was no chance of that rolling off, Dennis, was there? What a fantastic shot that was. Incredible queuing. Eight. Nine. We've seen glimpses this evening, haven't we, of his great talent, his great natural ability, but there's been a lot of carelessness as well thrown in to the mix this evening. And if he wants to compete at the highest level and be a tournament winner, there are things that he needs to eradicate. Well, it Sixth. will come with experience, but he's, he's terrific to watch. He really is a bit special, but Marco had a chance to Ninth. punish him, as he did in the frame before the mid-session interval. He, he nicked that with a lovely clearance. They went on the black. He had the chance to do it again there. 23. Twenty-eight. Doesn't really matter about that. It's faint. Marco stays in his seat. And Xiao Sing Tong will be... Well, no wonder he puffs his cheeks out. He's back to just one frame behind. Three, two to Marco Fu. Just still a few unforced errors creeping into this young Chinese player's game. Marco had a chance to punish him there. As I mentioned, he did it in the previous frame. But uh, he didn't on this occasion. And uh, he knows what his young opponent's capable of doing. So he's well aware of what he's up against. Best of 11, first to six. And I think you had a word with uh, Marco about the table, Peter. Was he saying he was playing a little bit heavy? I did, yes. I spoke to Marco very briefly at the interval. And he confirmed my suspicions that the table was playing heavy. And it's quite, playing quite slow. And sometimes it can be difficult to adjust. But it is the same for both players. And it's the one that adjusts better. Like a foot. There you go, the start of frame six. Well, that's a good break off shot from Marco Fu. It's a good break-off shot, as Peter mentioned. You can't just come off either side cushion and nestle into the <coughs> pack of reds because there's reds either side of the bunch that would be left available. That's why he's playing the shot as he is. Two cushions and the glancing blow. 
don't mind them missing it on the first attempt. Foul. Miss. The last thing you want to do is. Uh, Play again. Well, or you want back. Well, I tell you what. I think he should have had a look where the cue ball was. I think it was more difficult where it had yep. finished okay. up on the cushion. Now let's see where it finishes oh. this time. Is it going to finish tight on the cushion? Michael Fufu. Uh, he's not even having a look, uh, Marco, because I think he eventually is going to get this uh, shot right. Yeah, Marco. Hang on one second. I need to check if you can see the red behind the full ball. Oh, he's just checking to see if he could see a red full ball, because if he could see a red full ball, Jan Verhaas would warn him if he has three misses, it's he'd lose the frame. Right away. Mm, very interesting. I don't think he can see the other red full ball myself, but that's why he's placing that one. Okay. No, he can't see it, otherwise Jan would have warned him. Three misses and you lose the frame, so third time lucky. Can he catch the red this time? Oh, and a miss. Marco Fufu. Marco? Fourth time lucky. Fifth time lucky. Foul. And a miss. He Marco could win the frame four. without leaving his seat here, Marco. He's watching what's going on on the other table. Quite happy to take these penalty points. Yeah. Marco? He's caught it too thick though. But he might just be okay because the black's not available. Might have a slight angle to play for the blue here. Find out shortly. Mm, it's almost dead straight. Just played it into the right side of the pocket. One. Not bad. There's a red at the back of the bunch that he could play on, but there's no colour available. I wonder will he risk going into the pink and reds off two cushions. Lots of left-hand side. And here it comes. He's got too much in it. That's in no man's land. Six. Is there a plant that's going to come to his rescue? It'll be a three ball plant. Let's see as we pull out. Now uh, it's going to the right of the pocket, but that's okay. He can squeeze this. You've got the per perfect picture there of him squeezing this to make it into a plant. See, it's sent the red Seven. off to the left because of the angle he had. It's what you call a squeeze shot. Just slightly the wrong side of the green here. Set. Taking the more difficult of the two reds here. Marco Fu, 10. And that's another missed opportunity for Marco.
just a bit short with his pace. It's a very good pot. And what a kiss that was. And it's worked out very nicely. Seven. That's uh, a little bonus there, the pink going on to the black spot. Eight. Fourteen. Fifteen. <coughs> Twenty one. Twenty two. I think he was playing a little cannon there on the red to the right. Still got another red available, but a little nudge in that red would have left him perfect on one for the left corner. So should be okay. Twenty nine. can get on that one to the right and we'll clear another two so he doesn't have to go into them but he may play the cannon again and this time does he get it perfect absolutely perfection there that cannon 35 and that one shot 36. has opened most of the reds up got a slight heavy contact but he'll be okay Forty three. Zhao forty three. He's done it again. The number of times he's got to 40 odd and then <coughs> misses one you wouldn't expect him to miss. One. Now can Marco punish the young player here for that missed blue? He had a chance to pinch the last frame, didn't do it. Six. Seven. Thirteen. <laughs> 
14. Twenty. It's just one of those matches, Peter, isn't it? I mean, uh, Young Xiao Zentong could be easily 4-2 in front. It looks as if he's going to fall 4-2 behind. Yes, he's a young man with an awful lot of natural 27. ability. And he is great to watch, as you've mentioned a few times this evening, but his <coughs> concentration and lack of focus and carelessness is costing him dear in this match. And Marco Fu hasn't been anywhere near his best so far. It certainly could have been a very different scoreline if he'd okay. taken his chances, that's for sure. 33. Thirty-five. Thirty-seven. Just needs the green. But he'll automatically finish on the brown anyway, so can't see him missing this one. Forty. Started very nicely, the Marco. Break of 86 in the opening frame, but it's been a little bit of a struggle. 44. I think probably, as Peter mentioned, the table playing slightly heavy, but you'd be delighted with this here. 49. Fifty-five. Doesn't need the black, but he wants to roll it in anyway. So it's 16. a frame again that Marco Marcos might lose, but uh, he's done well to pinch it, <laughs> and he extends his lead. He's now 4-2 up, but he still needs two frames. Yeah, it's hard to know why the table's playing a little bit heavy because they have table heaters. Uh, you see it time and time again, the little red letters that are, uh, are numbers that are there. That's the temperature that it keeps the slate at. Normally with a venue, when you put a table in, or it used to be the case, that for the first day or two, there'd be still a little bit of dampness in the cloth and slates, but doesn't happen so much these days because of the conditions but I mean normally the conditions are perfect for the players so I don't know why it should be Peter more often than not Dennis I think it really comes down to the humidity the levels of humidity the one tournament that we play in around the world where the humidity is always the lowest is in Beijing and the balls always play very light there and what I mean by that is that when a player plays a shot, if they're playing a screw shot, they have to play it with less pace than they would, for instance, this evening when it's playing heavier. <coughs> it's all to do with Fred the moisture seven. in the atmosphere, Zhao which affects how heavy the balls physically play. So Zhao Jingtong breaks off in frame seven, trailing by four frames to two. 
And I think he'll be kicking himself, this young man, because he will know in his own heart he could quite easily have been leading 4-2 at least this evening. Marco hasn't been at his best. He struggled on the conditions. You'll see the more experienced player out of the two. And that is a fantastic pot. That's a bit more like the Marco Fu we're used to seeing. Great shot to nothing. And unless things Marcus change Ford. dramatically, Dennis, you struggle to see the young man coming back into this match because he really has struggled with his, his focus and his concentration. He's had plenty of very good opportunities and just let his concentration slip and been a bit careless on numerous occasions this evening. Wow. See, this is what is so incredible about this young man. He's so naturally gifted. He just pots balls from everywhere. That really was an absolutely outstanding pot. That's another very, very good pot. Five. Six. Well, if he's covered the black, he's very unfortunate. I think he's okay the way he's walking around the table. That tells me he can get through to it. Yeah, just about. And he's in again. And when he got in, as Peter said, an unbelievable opening pot. But it's just the easy ones that he's missed that have caused the problems. Fourteen. Ooh, wobbled that one. And there's a sign of that carelessness again, Dennis. That was a very poor positional shot. This is tough. 22. Took no chances with the pace there. Opportunity to take the black and go into the reds if he wants to. Played that very nicely. He's got so much ability, this young man. If he can just work 29. on his concentration and focus and just take some of the carelessness out of his game, he really could be a force in this game. 30. Now, this is not a good pack to go into, but he's got terrific Q power. He's going to need it here. He's played it well. I mean, that's a lovely shot. He could quite easily have stuck in the back of the red there. But he is that type of player. Within a matter of, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, he could easily win a few frames. 38. Suppose you could compare him a little bit to like, um, like a Judd Trump. Yes, his style is very similar, Dennis. He's very aggressive, plays very attacking, likes to get on with it. 40. Really flows around the table. 41. And as you mentioned earlier in the match, he's another left-hander with a serious amount of natural ability. Forty-eight.
49. Yeah, you can score enough with that. Four reds that are tied up near the pink spot. Already 54 in front. <coughs> Put himself enough in front with the two loose reds. It's the one to the right is not uh, a gimme by any means, but he could quite easily drop in behind that. Fifty-six. As long as he's not straight. If he's dead straight on the black, he's left it awkward. He could have stunned over behind that red and left it for the left middle or the right corner, and he's got to really get into this now. Wow, well, where's that cue ball going to finish up? Yeah, it was the shot to get on 63. the black that caused him the problem. 62 in front, but there's still a possible 67 there. Smiling away to himself. He might take this red on to the left corner because there's a shot to nothing. The white will go back up the table, and he only needs the red. And when you can pot like that, it's not a problem, 64. is it? It was a little bit of a risk 64. there, but uh, barring a snooker, you would feel he's pulled one frame back. <laughs> it's only one snooker that's needed to tie. Why would he want to have played that, Peter? It was a very dangerous choice of shot, Dennis, because he could easily have gone in off into the corner there. Well, anyway, Marco didn't convert the red, but had he have converted the red, he's nicely on the black. He could quite easily have got himself right back into the frame, but uh, another special coming up, is it? <laughs> Fun terrific. Five. Six. Thirteen. Fourteen. It looks to me the sort of young player you wouldn't like to have a practice session with be sitting in your seat 21. all day watching or picking the balls out for them. 22. <coughs> 29. 31. Thirty eight, forty three, forty nine. Yeah, it was 56. a frame, frame that the young Chinese That's player okay. had to take. And didn't he do it in style? And he closes the gap. He's now just one behind. It's 4-3 to Marco Fu. Yeah, it certainly was a must-win frame for him there because Marco 
that he have uh, taken that frame and only needed one. You wouldn't have seen a way back for Zhao Zingtong, but as it is, it's in the balance again. And Marco knows, as he stays in the arena here, waiting for his young opponent to come back, that no more slip-ups. Chatting in the players' room to Wayne Griffiths, Terry's son. Uh, Wayne's been working with Marco now for quite a number of years. Terry used to coach Marco, but Marco moved back to Hong Kong, where Wayne has been out there teaching quite a few of the locals. But his main player is uh, Marco, who has been playing remarkably well. Did well to win the Scottish Open. Just glancing at the other table, seeing what's going on there. So we'll pick up the commentary when Zhao Ting Tong returns. Frame eight, Marco Futterberg. So Marco Fu breaks off. Let's start at frame eight. And that's a very good cue ball. That's a good break. a gap can you believe it thought he could take the red on and wouldn't leave anything and there's a gap through to the one he missed one. the black has been clear most of the frames with the boys the way they break off but this time it's uh, been hampered with that red in the match this afternoon with scott donaldson and mark selby i think every frame there was a red that went next to the black and put it out of play early on this can open things up somewhat. Just a bit. Played it nicely. Six. Yeah, a tough audience today. Not easy to get a good round of applause. I think it's a century break they're waiting for, Dennis. Maybe they'll get Seven. one here. Who knows? <laughs> it's certainly not going to be easy for Marco with both the Pink and the black out of commission now. 13. Hmm, I wonder if the pink's just about OK. It might be on for the left corner. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, the, oh. 14. It's a huge bounce. Dear me. Right. That's incredible. That's gone at least 12 inches further across the table than it should have done. It makes you look a little bit silly. You know, people think uh, you played a poor positional shot. That was the bounce off the cushion that caused that. Nine. 
19. Be interesting to see how he plays this shot. Can stun around the back of the black and red, but you can also pot this and just cannon the red to the left of the black. Depends how he feels. He's gone for the cannon. Um, 20. Well, he's a bit close to the black, but it was a good effort. He wanted to hit that red just slightly on the left side, and he hit it full ball. But he's far enough away from the black not to push it. Twenty-seven. Well, if he's on this one <laughs> to the right corner, it's a bonus because he just overscrewed that. No, he can't pop that. Played for the one that he's taking, but he just overscrewed it slightly. Marco Fu, twenty-seven. <laughs> Prolonged round of applause for the other table. I suppose it's a, sometimes a little bit off-putting for the spectators because they can see, you know, they can see all four tables. Certainly, they're in a good position to watch two tables. I used to find that a bit confusing. As we see, a terrific effort and a very fine shot. I thought he was on absolutely nothing there, but he's on this Six. red. And he could play a cannon onto the red to the left of the black. No, he decided to just go around the Seven. back of them, but I thought he would have just played to nudge the red there next to the black. Yeah, I was just saying there, Peter, it's hard to concentrate when you're, you're watching a couple of tables for the spectators. And it's not easy for the players either because they see a lot of movement. I must admit, personally, I used to prefer when we used to have the screens when the tables Seven, were sectioned off Seven. because then you could concentrate properly. But now when you're playing shots, you might be on a black on the spot and there's just so much movement, whether it's referees on other tables or other players walking around. So it's not easy, it's something that the players have had to get used to. But it certainly doesn't aid concentration, that's for sure. A good safety shot there from Marco. After Zhao attempted a very difficult thin cut into the right centre. And he's faced with a very difficult safety shot here. Oh, that is absolutely ridiculous. What an absolutely incredible pot. This young man is so gifted, it's frightening. Such a difficult pot Eight. into the right-hand black pocket there. Even in practice, you'd probably get that one or two times out of ten. Oh, my God. It's, it's been the story of this Jason match, Tom. Dennis, hasn't it? You know, he's Eight. potted some amazing balls and then just a, a lack of concentration. I mean, he not only missed that, he didn't even get that one in the jaws of the pocket. One. 
Well, there's no distraction now for the players because players finished on the other three tables. Six. Seven. And it's just been the story of this match so far. Zhao Jingtong has potted some amazing balls and given himself so many opportunities in this match. And he's also missed so many easy oh. balls just through sheer lack of concentration, lack of focus. He's been very, very careless this evening. And you can't give somebody as good as Marco Fu countless opportunities. 13. Because even though he's not played well this evening and he struggled with the heavy conditions, you know, sooner or later, Marco Fu is going to step up. Big frame, this. 21. Still needs a couple of the uh, reds after this black, but they're perfectly placed. So even though he's straightish on the black, I think he's got a slight angle. Yeah, there you see it. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. <coughs> Black. And one more red would be enough. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Forty-three. <laughs> what a kick that was. Didn't affect the shot that much, but... Uh, 50. Mm. 51. Marco there just showing his young opponent that he can knock the long ones in. Fifty-six. Fifty-eight. He's keeping the referee and Verhas on his toes here. He was down to pop that yellow before the blue was on the spot. To play the shot just before it's re-spotted is a foul. Sixty-five. Seventy. Doesn't matter about Not that. Seventy. Jai Fintong, a break of sixty-four and fifty-six in the previous frame. But it's Marco Fu who produced the goods there.
and he now leads 5-3. Just needs one more frame. Could be very difficult now for the young Chinese player after all the mistakes he's made and all the fabulous long pots he's knocked in. Where can he summon up? the mental strength to take three in a row you can't see it happening peter it's going to be very difficult dennis and it's been a story of missed opportunities for him so far you know we've seen flashes of brilliance from him we've seen his raw natural talent his, his ability but we've all also seen his carelessness and he'll be so disappointed sitting in his seat there because he knows he's had plenty of opportunities in this match Yeah, we tend to forget he's just 20 years of age and hasn't been a professional that long and he's uh, still learning. But I'll tell you what, he'll take an awful lot from this match because he's sitting there and he knows he could have been in the next round if he hadn't have made the unforced errors. I remember speaking to Mark Williams about this young man probably about five or six years ago. And Mark Williams played him in an exhibition in China and he said what a gifted player he was. getting a round of applause because I think the spectators now are just focusing on the one match. Uh, Three. Well, he knocked a cracking long pot in the previous frame. The frame is over. Can he do another one here? The black, but I don't think it's put it out of commission. I think he can take the long blue, the red to the right of the bunch, and then finish on the black. So it didn't work out all that bad. And if he can get an angle on the black here, he can then think about disturbing some of the reds. I think there might be one red, the one next to the black will be available possibly into the left corner. Oh, what have you done there, Marco? Well, we talked Marco an awful no. lot about okay. Xiao Zing Tong losing his concentration. The more experienced Marco Fu certainly lost it there. That's confused him. the one table now to focus on but he's overscrewed that and uh, that <coughs> red next to the black that I thought might pot into the left corner doesn't well, there's no way he can get onto it now you can see it blocked off so there's he's just looking for seven points here And the safety shot. Eight. Zhao Xintong. Eight.
Very good reply from Marco Fu. Duly acknowledged by Xiao Jingtong. Well, that's a snooker on all of the reds. Excellent safety shot. Is it going to reach? Oh, it did, but it hit the pink. Mark of I'll be going back. You just have to readjust here because uh, it come off fairly off square, square that. Shouldn't be a problem because even if he plays with a little bit more pace, highly unlikely he would leave one. Okay. Well, he must okay. have moved it okay. a millimetre there. Could make all the difference, Dennis. <laughs> now, this is a better line. As I say, even if he slides off it, he won't leave anything. Trying to leave that white tight on the ball cushion there. Just overhead it means that it's an easier safety shot. Another big bounce, which affected the angle that it came off the cushion. Came off a lot squarer instead of sliding. And this is an opportunity. One. This is another very 16. good opportunity for Xiao Jing Tong. Can he keep his focus and concentration this time? 17. And not make a careless mistake because that's been the story of this match so far. Generally, he's been getting in first and creating opportunities for himself. Looks very comfortable 24. around the table, plays with a really nice pace and rhythm. 25. And I think out of the two players, because he generally hits the ball a bit harder, these slightly more difficult conditions have suited him more than Marco Fu. Well, he's cannoned the wrong red there. Okay, he's still on this one with the rest, but uh, it wasn't the one he played for. Thank you. 33. But now that his back is against the wall, he knows he has to focus 100%. One more slip up and he could be out of this year's Betway UK Championship. But 
He is a precocious talent. And, you know, if he gets to 5-4 and every chance that he'll do that. Just to say he couldn't play another couple of frames like this. Meanwhile, he's just finished slightly awkward on the black. Nicely judged to go between the two reds there. And this... 47. Red, he pots, clears the one to the right of the pink. 48. And he can play for that one now that I mentioned. He can stun between the two reds. He can play for either of those two loose reds. But... Uh, that's the one he played for. It was the red previously <coughs> that he potted that cleared the path for this 56. one. Fifty-six. He certainly doesn't hang about when he gets going. Oh, he needs to pull up. He's okay. He only needs the red. 62. 63. 70. Seventy one. Just a half ball cannon on this red. We'll leave it on. Full ball. Uh, doesn't really matter, but he can still cut this in the middle pocket, but frame well and truly over. Led the double instead. Doesn't matter. But it doesn't go in. Seventy eight. And his back was right against the wall. And didn't he respond well? That was a frame-winning effort there from this young Chinese player. And he's far from finished yet, but he still trails Mark Old Fu by five frames to four. And no loss of focus in that frame. And he knew he couldn't afford it. But uh, I said it a few times, although he is a frame behind. He could quite easily have been back at his hotel. A winner here because he's had plenty of opportunities, just a few careless ones. And 10. Marco Futuro. <coughs> You know, he was thinking about taking this on. He might still do. Now, where's the red going to finish? Where's oh. the white going to finish? Marco Fu, four. He's an unbelievable potter, but maybe that was just a bit too ambitious. It could quite easily have... Split all the reds over the table once he missed the pot. Marco's got the opportunity to he here to play a really attacking shot, taking the red into the right corner, going into the reds and hopefully staying on the black into the same pocket. Decided to take the straighter red on. One. I wasn't so sure initially that the black went past this red. The black does go. 
There you see it. And that's a very well judged cannon. And the key to this frame coming up, he can pop Eight. the red, leave him angled on the black, and then go into the bunch of reds because he's got the one near the right corner as a bit of insurance. Wow. A good cannon into the bunch with plenty of pace. He's bound to be on this one that's near the cue ball, and he can bring quite a few more into play. Wow. Parker Foom, nine. Well, he's, he's had a bit of a result there because uh, that was a poor effort from Marco there. He knew that was a good chance, and once he missed the black, he was very fortunate to finish up where he has. Mm, that's not the best kiss on the yellow. Michael can get through to this red. was another indication of just how heavy this cloth is playing. Marco played that with lots of left-hand side. And normally on these very fine cloths, when you play that sort of shot, if you're going to miss, you're going to miss that thin. And the fact that he missed that thick tells us how heavy this cloth is playing. Marco struggled tonight. He'd be a very relieved winner if he does manage to come through this match because these conditions certainly haven't suited him. That was a very good effort. Good safety shot. Is that a snooper on all the reds? Yeah, that first glance, not easy to land on the red. That's near the cushion behind the black spot. You'd have to play this with loads aside and don't know if he can just pass the green and it's risky just to nudge into the edge of the bunch. So it's the uh, delicate little shot that he's looking for here. That's not going to reach. Oh, I'm going to miss Marco Fuf. If he plays the same shot again, <coughs> with a little bit more pace, he can leave the red on. Yep, Marco. This has got to be dead wet. I don't think he can get past the red to play the one into the middle pocket. And it doesn't go up into the corner, so. Can't play behind the ball color, just the cushion he's looking for.
the target here with the safety shot is the yellow ball, but I think he can get past the black to take this pot on. First glance, I didn't think he could, but yeah, there's enough room. Oh, oh. he's got to go in the middle pocket. He's okay because he can play for the red to the left of the bunch. The black will go back on its own spot. So in a couple of shots time, he could have uh, an excellent opportunity. Yep, if he's got an angle, and he has to pot this red, leave the black Eight. to the right corner. No problem. And if he's got an angle, he can screw back on the one next to the black, and that will clear the black into both corners. Good chance now for the man from Hong Kong. Sixty. Seventeen. That's been interesting to note, Dennis, that Marco's own concentration and focus has gone up since players stopped on the other table. He looked a bit disinterested at times, I felt, throughout this match and spending a lot of time looking at the other tables, 24. which is most unlike him. Well, I think that that was partly down to the fact that he's been struggling on the conditions this evening but this is a winning opportunity now and he's given this his full 25. focus and attention Although he has slipped up here and there, if you look at his breaks, he's opened with an 86 break. And then in frame 3, 32. 41, then a 56, 62 in frame 6. 33. 70 in frame 8. Uh, although he's struggled with part of his game, overall, it's pretty solid. But he's far from safe just yet. Those reds all sort of covering each other somewhat. He doesn't need many of them. Forty. Yes, it's been his positional play which has been affected. By the table playing heavier this evening more than any other part of his game. Always scores very, very well in amongst the balls. 41. And such a great competitor. One good cannon here, the two reds there that are together. If he can hit those in the centre, he'll open all the reds up, but he only needs another one or two to make absolutely certain. And there's the cannon played to perfection. And even if he can't hold <coughs> for the black here, he's got a gap to screw eight. up for the blue. 65 in front, so... Three more pots. And secure the match, he's just checking the scoreboard. Looking at that angle, he'll have to play up for the blue. can go through that gap there and he <coughs> and he's taking the other one to 
hold this end of the table. Well, I'm surprised he played 49. that one. The other one seemed much easier to, to pot and get on the blue. So just just pushing the 14. green safe, but uh, he's got a 66-point advantage, but not safe just yet. And that might just be the end. You're going to see an awful lot more of this young Chinese player. One. Yeah, he knows that this is the end but yeah what a talent you'll be seeing an awful lot of this young player Get in there. <laughs> and i certainly enjoy watching him he's a Fuck. real natural talent that don't come along that often Six. And I just detected a little skip in Marco's step there as he potted that red. No matter how many times you do it, Peter, it's always nice when you get to the winning line. Isn't it? It's a nice feeling inside. I can't remember, Dennis. <laughs> Eleven. Twelve. They've only played each other on three occasions. Last time in the Asian Tour event. Marco won that 4-1, but uh, the time before, his young opponent 19. beat him 5-4 in the Shanghai Masters. So It wasn't 20. straightforward because we've seen the balls that uh, Xiao Tong had missed. And Marco would tell you himself that he could quite easily have lost this match. 27. 28. Doesn't really matter about this red along the cushion. 35. And of course, 36. when the pressure's off, <laughs> those shots become much easier. It made it look easy, that's for sure. 41. Well, surely he'll not pop the 41. yellow as well. Can't be that relaxed. Why not? Surely 43. he can pop the green as well. Well, in the end, both players shake hands, smiles all around. Marco Fu will be uh, pleasantly relieved because he knows his young player could quite easily have beaten him this, day, this evening. But he enjoys that drink. And in the end, he takes the match six frames to four.